Good morning. Welcome to St. John in the Wilderness on this third Sunday after Pentecost. We are so glad that you're with us on this beautiful first day of summer and a happy Father's Day as well to all of you. If you're joining us online, we hope you'll take a moment and just let us know that you're there. Say hello and good morning. And as we go about the service, feel free to type in your participation, whether it's a prayer or a word of thanks or anything. We're so glad to have a sense of the church gathered there online. Just a couple of things as we're thinking about moving forward and how we might worship outside. First of all, we are gathering Monday to Thursday for morning and evening prayer in the rector's garden or under the tent. Morning prayers at 9, evening prayers at 4.30, and we're asking you to bring your, uh, your own chair if you have one, to bring your own Book of Common Prayer as well, and to wear a mask. And we also will uh, we'll distance, we'll make sure that we're all 6 to 10 feet apart for that. And we're hoping as well to gather for worship on Sunday, a week from today, outside under the tent. Uh, it's a complicated thing to think about because numbers will, are going to be limit, limited to 25 people. And so we're putting together a document that explains a new pattern for worshiping at this moment where we're going to have to space out and limit the attendance and ask people to wear masks and bring their own chairs and uh, how to RSVP so we can take care of all that. So there are a lot of details there that we're still working with uh, as well, communicating with, with our bishop. And uh, we're hoping to get that out by Tuesday so that you can sign up and you can come if you'd like. And as we go through this process, I think the most important thing is that we just remain patient and flexible uh, because uh, it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve and, uh, and we can make sure that whether people are coming or they're participating online, that, that everyone is welcome to do that as they're comfortable and, uh, and that we respect everyone for wherever they might be in terms of uh, how it's best for you to worship at this point in time. So we'll be in touch with that and we'll have some details. We've been working on those uh, and we'll get that out as soon as we can. Um, and uh, we look forward to this kind of next chapter, this season that we're going to enter into for a new way of gathering at the moment. Um, and we hope that you'll enjoy it as well and know that, uh, that we're so glad to be able to worship God in any way that we can. And that's the most important thing. There's a bulletin online on our website for this service. You're welcome to look it up if you'd like. And we are so glad to be gathered to praise God and to share in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of my child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up 
He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, but proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fill him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> You have to love the irony in a Father's Day gospel text that reminds us that if we do not love God more than mother and father, then we have no place in God's kingdom. One of the realities of gathering for online worship is that, as you have noticed, we have made some changes to the service to adjust for streaming. The one that is the most obvious is that we often skip a reading or two so we might shorten things up a little bit. Of course, the stories that we include and the stories that we leave out say a lot about us. This week I began to work on my sermon for today and I said to myself, we can leave out this Old Testament reading about, about Hagar. First of all, it's a long reading. We could save some time. Attention spans are short these days and getting shorter. It's hard enough to keep your attention when you're here in person, but when you're at home, there's all kinds of things 
competing for your interest. Secondly, I was thinking of skipping the story of Hagar because it's a hard story. It's hard to read, hard to listen to, and it's hard to preach. In fact, this is the first story in a famous book about Old Testament stories of women who are taken advantage of. The book is called Texts of Terror, and in it, Phyllis Tribble argues that Hagar is used and not treated fairly. Tribble also argues that her story needs to be told because so often women like Hagar find their stories being hushed and forgotten. It's all too easy to ignore people who have been cast down, abused, and taken advantage of. We would rather not hear their stories because we would like to pretend that these bad things just don't happen at all. But they do happen. They happened in ancient times and they happen now. So I realized that even if I was unsure exactly how I might explain this text or how to preach it, that it would not be fair to Hagar to leave it out this Sunday. Our lectionary is here, at least in part, so we are forced to encounter parts of the Bible that we prefer to ignore. Today we are encountering Hagar, a woman of substantial faith. God began with Abraham, and so should we. God made a promise to Abraham to make a great nation of him. His descendants shall number like the stars of the sky. The problem is that Abraham and his wife, Sarah, are now senior citizens, and they have no children. To solve this problem, Sarah gives Abraham a slave woman of hers named Hagar to be his wife and to bear him a son. Though she has no say in the matter, Hagar does give Abraham a son named Ishmael. But then Sarah treats her harshly, and Hagar flees into the wilderness. Abraham does not protect her. God, the great deliverer, visits Hagar in the wilderness and tells her to return to Sarah and to submit to her. Sarah does have a son, a gift from God in her old age, and she names him Isaac. In our reading today, we hear of Isaac and Ishmael playing together as toddlers. Sarah is threatened by Hagar and Ishmael, and so she wants to cast them out into the wilderness again. This time, Abraham is distressed by this, and God says that little Ishmael will be provided for. Hagar and Ishmael are sent out with few provisions, and it looks like the little boy is going to die. The text says that God hears the voice of the boy crying and tells Hagar not to be afraid. God will make a great nation of him also. God opened Hagar's eyes to see a well nearby which saved their lives. This son of Abraham and this wife of Abraham will survive in the wilderness after all. So that's our story from the Old Testament. And maybe at first glance, you might be saying to yourself, well, this story doesn't sound so bad. What's the big deal? You might be thinking about how those were ancient times, very different times than today. Whenever we find ourselves thinking like that, it's important we pause to reflect because that kind of thinking is still very much part of why these stories continue today. There are many people who face these same issues. We know that women, that people of every kind are used and abused. And I'm convinced that one of the reasons these things still happen is that we like to brush over or find ways to justify stories that shock and offend us. In reality, the story is troubling because Hagar has little or no agency at all. The text often doesn't use her name like the others. She is often referred to as slave girl and as a less valuable foreigner. It's also clear that her son is worth more to everyone than she is. And it's troubling how she is treated by Abraham 
and even by God at times. How do we explain the, the faithful Abraham casting out his wife and son? How do we explain how God seems to allow Sarah to treat Hagar so harshly? What are we as people who hold the Bible to be a sacred text to do with readings like this? Well, first of all, this text is one which forces us to be mature Christian people. We cannot pretend the Bible is just filled with pastoral scenes of Jesus tending the sheep like we find in a children's book. Even our gospel reading today has some hard words for us to grapple with. We should look for grace in this passage, but we should also acknowledge that sometimes grace is hard to find. That is sort of like our lives too, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to see where God is moving. Sometimes it's hard to understand why God would allow certain things to happen. We can be encouraged in this passage that God does not forget Hagar and Ishmael, that he provides for them. We find this beautiful moment of grace when God opened Hagar's eyes to see that well of water. We can pray that God might help us when we are in the desert, so we might have eyes to see water when it's needed most. Indeed, living water is always nearby if we would just have eyes to see it. At a minimum, we should tell Hagar's story, both the good parts and the bad. In much of the scriptures, we find God working with people who are a lot like us, even those who have been taken advantage of. Most of all, we must think of Hagar as a member of our spiritual family. We all think of ourselves as children of Abraham. We should think of ourselves as children of Hagar too. If Abraham is our spiritual father, is not Hagar also our mother? She is a pivotal figure in biblical theology. Did you know that Hagar is the first person in scripture whom a divine messenger visits and the only person who dares to name the deity. She is the first woman to bear a child, the first to hear an enunciation, the only one to receive a divine promise of descendants, and the first to weep for her dying child. This is our story to tell because Hagar is a part of us. We can be honest about the grace of her story. And we can be honest about when we look for grace, and it seems there is none to be found. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our God, the Almighty One, counts the hairs of our head. Let us come before God in confidence, praying for all the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you this day for the value you have placed upon us by giving us Christ, our Savior. Empower us to acknowledge this gift in lives of service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God in Christ Jesus, that you have answered our fears with love. Give to us the faith to go where others dare not to proclaim the vastness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, in Christ Jesus, that you are concerned with the frailty of our living. You know our addictions, our divorcings, our doubtings, our escapes. Grant us the wholeness we seek. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, in Christ Jesus, that you Aid those who work for justice and peace by giving them courage, vision, and strength. Enlist all people in the struggle for human dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, that you favor the poor, the meek, the oppressed, the homeless, and the hungry. Make your compassion contagious that the rich might share with the poor, the strong befriend the weak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, that you know the dangers that lurk among us. We pray for those whom you have called to guard and protect your entire creation, those who work the land, who police the streets, who defend the nations. Strengthen them for their difficult task. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, O God, that you refresh us with, the, with times of leisure and recreation. Renew us that we might further appreciate you, each other, in all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, our God of strength, for you do not desire harm, but you favor our health. Give to us necessary measures of health, patience, and hope. We particularly pray for Vanessa, Lori, and Francis. Also for Tom, Sue, Nancy, as well as for Kathy, Carolyn, for Ernie, and Paula. We also pray for Tom, John, Sally, as well as for Ann and Steve, for Dave, Nancy, also for Bob, Mary Frances, Mike, and Joshua. And we pray for Emily, Joanne, Robbie, and Carol, and for Michael, and Father Alex. Are there others? Simone. That Christ the good physician might intervene and grant them healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. We pray for all of the dead, for all those who have died from coronavirus. Are there others? We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that your church has received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Brothers and sisters, let us go forth in the name of Christ to serve. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.